because when you don't know, it's probably not a good book. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my April wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 14 books this month. I'm splitting it up into two parts. If you're interested in the first seven books that I read this month then you can check out part one which has been up for like two weeks now because I've just been far too lazy to film this part two video. But here we are, so here are the last seven books that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is Nanny Dearest by Flora Collins and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Sue Keller who is mourning the recent death of her father after losing her mother years prior to cancer. One day she runs into her childhood nanny Annalise. As they spend more time together, Annalise starts to fill that parental figure role that she's been missing. Sue's friends begin to worry when they uncover who Annalise really is and some secrets that she is hiding. I enjoyed the story, but I do think that it was a very slow pace, which sometimes took me out of the story. I really liked how there was alternating points of views and timelines. So there was Annie's point of view in 1996 when she was Sue's nanny, and then we also had Sue's point of view in the present timeline, which I thought was a really interesting way to tell the story. Also really enjoyed how we got to see inside Annie's head and the obsession and attachment that she had with Sue. I I just found her character to be the most interesting and I could never really tell if she was trustworthy or not, which we love an unreliable narrator on this channel. She just always seemed to have an explanation for everything that happened, which was very convenient but very confusing at the same time. The biggest complaint I do have about the story is that the ending was very unsatisfying. I just felt like there were so many unanswered questions. There was also a scene that involved animal abuse that I definitely could have done without. So overall I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was fun while it lasted. The but. next book I have is Love Decoded by Jennifer Yen and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. This book follows Gigi Wong who is a perfectionist. She strives to be the best at everything that she does. When her teacher announces that she will be nominating one student for an app writing competition, Gigi jumps at the chance to submit an app. When a new student named Etta joins the school, Gigi gets the idea to create a friend matching app and it's like the story of that. This is an Emma retelling which I didn't actually know picking up and I'm not really sure what it was about the story. I just like didn't vibe with it. Just something about the characters and just the overall story just didn't really capture my attention at all. It almost felt like a chore to finish which you never really want when reading a book. It felt very surface level and juvenile and I just didn't care about anything. I also was not the biggest fan of Gigi. I think that she was very selfish in literally everything that she did. I listened to this on audiobook and I particularly did not like when the narrator was speaking as Edda. She made her very very nasally and just annoying in my opinion so anytime she spoke it was just like very grating on my ears but I will give the book kudos for making multiple females interested and very successful in STEM we love to see that but overall I gave it a two out of five stars next up we have meet me in the margins by Melissa Ferguson I give this a five out of five stars I really enjoyed this one this book follows Savannah Cade who is an editor at uh, the very prestigious Pennington Publishing house. They believe only in intellectual books and frown upon anything that is commercial fiction. But Savannah has been harboring a secret. She has written a romance novel and it has been requested by a competing publisher. After she leaves her manuscript in her secret book nook, she returns and finds handwritten notes written in the margins on what can be improved with her story. Her first reaction is to be defensive, but she quickly realizes that she needs all the help she can get to whip this manuscript into submission-ready status. With her new intimidating boss, William Pennington, making changes to the company, Savannah must find a way to keep working with her mystery editor without getting caught, and it's like the story of that. This was just so stinking cute. It gave me hating game vibes, which is probably just because it took place in a publishing house and you know, it's a romance, but it was just so much fun to read. I really enjoyed the setting of the publishing house and I think that the idea of the secret book nook was so much fun. I think that an arc room would make my little reader heart flutter. I loved both of these main characters. I think that they had such great chemistry together. It's pretty obvious who the mystery editor is right from the beginning and who Savannah is going to end up with, but that 
definitely didn't take away from my enjoyment of the story. I think that Savannah was a very relatable character. I loved how she was trying to juggle her aspirations as well as her job and on top of that, a very successful, driven family as well. I also really liked the added tension of Olivia, who is Savannah's sister, and her fiancé living in the same space as Savannah. I don't want to give any spoilers, but I think that it made for a very interesting dynamic. Also, a huge fan of Lila, who was Savannah's work partner as well as her best friend. I just loved their friendship so much. Everybody needs a Lila in their life. I will say that if you are looking for a book with a lot of steamy scenes this is not it there was literally one kissing scene in the entire book but it was really cute and I did enjoy it so I gave it a five out of five stars next up I have a book that has been on my shelf since I started booktube and I keep saying that I'm gonna read it and then I never do but it is Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass I have finally picked up the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I read the first one in 2019 and just refused to move on because they intimidate me because everybody loves these books so much. But I am also part of that fan club now because I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think that it took me a really long time while reading Throne of Glass to get invested in the story. This one, I was into it right from the very beginning, so I'm hoping that I can pick up the rest of the series and dive straight into it and be fully invested because I didn't want to pick up this book because it took me so long to get into the last book, I was like, is it even worth it? But I'm thinking that it's definitely worth it because that ending... <sighs> I am so excited to see where the books go. And because it's my first time ever reading them, I feel like I should know how these books go because everybody talks about them, but I still have no idea what's gonna happen. So I'm very intrigued. Definitely going to be picking up Air of Fire hopefully soon. But then again, I did say that about Crown of Midnight and it took me three years, so we'll see. Next up I have She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott and Allison Derrick, and I gave this a four out of five stars. This well is Molly Parker, who has been in love with Cora since high school, but her social anxiety has made her not make a move. Alex Blackwood has just had a bad breakup with her girlfriend, Natalie, who is leaving for a tour with her band and doesn't exactly trust Alex to behave while she's gone. They are both freshmen at the same college. When Alex meets Molly, she learns of her crush and devises a plan to help Molly make her move and get the girl while simultaneously proving to Natalie that she can be friends with a girl without flirting. And it's like the story of that. This was a really cute read. I really liked watching Molly and Alex grow as the story progressed. I think that they were both very relatable characters in their own way. I think I like Alex more. I felt like she was very multi-layered and I really really loved how she was stressing how much she is more than just her looks. I really liked Alex and Molly's friendship and how much they learned about each other's likes and dislikes as Alex worked to get Molly to come out of her shell. I really liked how slow burn their romance was and how much they genuinely did not like each other for a while. I think that the dual point of view was very smart in this book because it really helped flesh out these characters even more and get a sense of who they were as people. I think that they had really good chemistry together, not only romantically, but as friends as well. And my favorite part was that the romance was not a huge part of the book. Each girl had their own issues and things that they were working through separate from each other. And I think that that was explored really well. So overall, I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. Definitely recommend if you're looking for something cute and easy to read. This one might be for you. Next book I have is Destroy All Monsters by Sam J. Miller. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. When Ash and Solomon were 12 years old, a traumatic event causes Ash to lose all of her memories while Solomon retreats into a fantasy world of his own creation. I read Sam J. Miller's other book, The Art of Starving, and absolutely loved it. So I was expecting to enjoy this book, but I was not a fan. I get what the author was trying to do, I just don't think that it was executed very well. I liked the dual point of view. I think it was fun to try to piece together how Solomon's fantasy world related to the real world, but I do think that at times it did get pretty confusing trying to figure out who was who and what was what in each world. I was just left very unsatisfied and I honestly don't really know how I feel about the book in the end, so I ended up giving it two out of five stars because when you don't know, it's probably not a good book.
And then the final book that I have is Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Dahlia Woodston, who is trying to reinvent herself after she quit her job and is divorcing her husband. She becomes a contestant on a reality cooking show called Chef's Special. She is very determined to win this prize money, but then she meets London Parker, who has just announced on national TV for the first time that they are non-binary. Dahlia and London grow closer as the show continues, but they quickly realize that they need to determine what's next because elimination is looming over both of their heads. I was really excited to read this book because the idea of like a pansexual non-binary character was very intriguing to me. I thought I was going to like it a lot more than I did. I liked the exploration of London and Dahlia's relationship, especially because they were both in a new phase of their life, but I do think that they were a little bit unhealthy for each other at some points of the story. It just felt like they began spending every single second they could together, but never actually communicated with one another other than letting each other know how attractive they were. So it just felt like they never actually talked about anything with substance. It did have many steamy sex scenes, so if Meet Me in the Margins is not your cup of tea with the one kissing scene, this one. This one has- this one's got lots of scenes for you. Lot, lots of them. I was not the biggest fan of London. I felt like they were very inconsiderate towards Dahlia's feelings a lot of the time and just tried to blow her off, which really bugged me. But I did like how London stood up for themselves when their father and other bigoted characters tried to say something to them. I do think that there was a lot of great representation in this book, especially on-page representation. My biggest complaint would probably be that the cooking show element of the whole book took a very, very big backseat to the romance, which I was the most excited about that element of the story, so it was just a little bit disappointing. But overall, I give it a 3 out of 5 stars, like it was an average read, but again, nothing super memorable in my opinion. Alright everybody, so those were the last seven books that I read for the month of April. It took a little bit of time to get my motivation back to film this, but here we are. If you are interested in the first seven books that I read for the month of April, that will be linked down below, so you guys can check that out as well. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!